Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Saka here, and welcome back to another episode of Europa Universalis 4. And when we last left off, we were in the middle of this war with England, and as promised, we are going to discuss the war screen here. So we can see on the left all of those, you know, competing on our side. We have us as the war leader, uh, Aragon, Brittany, Hungary, and Scotland. You can see the red flags here. They are our allies, Aragon and Brittany. We can see our war enthusiasm, how happy our people are that we are at war. We can see war exhaustion. So this is how, um, how devastated their country is, really. As you can see, England is at 3.17 war exhaustion, which increases all of those things. The uh, national unrest, it lowers man cover uh Recovery speed, it lowers their siege ability, it lowers their goods produced. War exhaustion is not good uh, for a country for sure. We can see their stability. Uh, we can see their blockade percentage. So 100% of England is blockaded and we can see participation. So this is uh, how much each one of these countries has contributed to the war effort. And we can actually see that Holland is doing a lot of work in this war on their side and England hadn't been doing a whole lot conversely we have participated 80% 87% of all of the war score uh, battles and sieges and whatnot and Hungary is actually keeping Holland at bay and we can see how many troops we have versus them and this is the entire alliance so we can see England has zero troops Galicia has six Utrecht has four Holland has six we have 33,742. We can see the cavalry. So England still has that one cav left over. And of course, we aren't advanced enough to have cannons. So what happens when you want to get out of a war? Uh, we have a free diplomat, and that's the only way you'll be able to go to this screen is have a free diplomat. And we can barter with the individual countries themselves or as the entire alliance. For maximum impact, what we can do is we can try to siege down or blockade, say, Galicia, to where they won't want to be in this war anymore. We separate piece them, leaving England in, and then our war score will increase because relative strength of the alliance goes down. They've lost an ally. And I think that's what we will focus on for now, is Galicia? Now, Aragon has 10,000 troops down here, 11,000. They could probably take out the Galician army, which of course will be good war score for us. And we might be able to negotiate uh, Galicia leaving with, say, war reparations or, um, or gold. What I was kind of considering is getting out these major players, like for, say, uh, Holland. They only have two provinces here. Both of them are forted up, but if we can siege them down or at least start a siege, then they will not be as apt to be in the war. We might be able to get some money off of them, get them out of the war, and really focus on England. So what we're going to do is, just for the time being, let us set our, um, our demands here. So we'll go Diplomacy and Super for Peace, and... We can sort by the diplomatic power cost. Now it puts the ones that we had claims on up top. Because we've had them claimed, they will not cost us any diplomatic points. And then you can see here, as the development increases, the amount of diplomatic points that is needed to demand it goes up as well. So if we wanted to leave with just the provinces we have claims on, those three, Hull, um, Coventry, and Sussex, it will cost us 34 uh, war score or the peace offer. And we can see why they're saying no for now. The length of the war is the biggest detractor. As the war rages on for longer and longer, they won't want to stay in it. Demands exceed the war score. That will go down whenever we get this much war score against England. So now we only have 16% against England. Taking their capital will be a huge blow. Killing their last army and sieging their last holding will be a huge blow. And then after that, we have to uh, rely on our ticking war score to get war score against England. Now, that is the total war score based on these four allies. 
So once we can knock a few out of the war, say Holland, we knock him out, we knock out Galicia, and Hungary knocks out Utrecht, then the war score percentage will increase. There will be a greater pressure on England to get out. So I think that is what we are going to do for now. So we can see we still have one English uh, island here, the Isle of Man, with one cavalry. Let's work on taking him out first. So we've got these 8,000 troops coming down, and let's actually go to Dorset. We'll send um, eight transports to Dorset. We'll break eight transports away here. Uh, transports here. The little cogs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And select the unit. We'll have them dock up in Dorset to pick up those troops. Once we get those 8,000 boarded, we'll take the Isle of Man. And then what we can do is actually see if we can get over here with our 16K, and we can. Uh, France is giving us access. Now, why is that? We can see they grant military access to Mason and Holland. And because Holland is in the war and they have given military access to Holland, we also have access through France, even though we're not at war. So we can take these 16K up here and try to siege down some Holland uh, territory as well as Utrecht. See if we can get them out of the war, shall we? So we'll go speed two so we don't miss a thing or get ambushed, let's say. So these 8K are coming and we do have our leader attached to that army, which is good. We're gonna be making a landing uh, with that leader. Great Britain occupied Leicester, which is awesome. Uh, let's actually merge up some of these units here. Keep our army together just in case they decide to land uh, some troops off of our border. We'll have a concerted force ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and board our eight troops, use our eight transports, go to the Irish Sea, and then we are going to make a landing. So status quo there, we don't have to worry about getting these eight ships back to help with the Navy until this completely gets sieged down. So we have some time here for those 10 ships. And now that we're here in the Irish Sea, we can click on the transport button. We have the 8K troops picked. And you know what? That isn't a very balanced army. Uh, you can see here that we are sending two infantry and six cav. If this was a more threatening force, I would definitely consider not landing, but why not? It's only gonna be one troop. He's gonna be heads up against this infantry, and then these cavalry are going to be flanking. They'll only be flanking at 50% due to the insufficient support, but that should be enough to get the job done. All right, how are our troops marching through France? Easy come, easy go. They should be up here, then we'll split the army into eight and eight and try to, uh, to put some pressure on Holland and get him out. When is this battle going to take place here? The 19th of March, so it takes a long time to land. We're gonna be at a disadvantage uh, because of the landing penalty, but we should still be fine. All right, there we go. We will split the army in half and march up here. Oh, it's blocked by a fort. Interesting. I forgot that. So Holland has a fort in each province, and because we came into a province with a fort, we cannot leave until that fort is sieged down. This might be enough to get Holland out of the war, though. Let's go to the diplomacy screen and see if we can sue him for peace and just negotiate for themselves. So 18 and negative 71. Length of war, Dutch military strength, the ally is in war, and Holland holds Amsterdam. It would be nice if some of the Holland forces came through and, uh, and got wrecked. So what we'll do is we might as well just detach the siege and march through here and see if we can find the Holland army, shall we? 
By that time, this army should be landed on the Isle of Man. All right, there's, there's Hungary moving in. And I don't see the Holland forces. Now, they're not over here in Hungary trying to siege them down. So this is very interesting here. Let's move into Berg. See if we can get some eyes on them. There's the combat. There we go. So now we should be able to siege this down in a matter of a few days. 22 days, we'll have the Isle of Man siege down. And I still don't see the forces of Holland. Once we get this blockade done, we can move our navy over here uh, to blockade Holland and put some extra um, pressure on them for sure. And the Isle of Man is about ready to be sieged down here. There we go. So now if we look at the war score, they are 100% blockaded. We have... Let's see, and... Let's make our demands here. Okay. So we'll let the war tick on. I mean, we might as well. Let's go ahead and get our ships docked up in the Isle of Man, pick these guys up, and get them to the mainland. We can also use this army, sort of uh, land and co, and really do some damage, try to siege them down separately, because um, I believe all of England is sieged down, so England's participation um, can't possibly go. Once these two forts fall, that will be uh, the long and short of it. All right, guys, go ahead and board up on the boats. These eight are gonna come down to Hampshire. Oh, geez, so Hungary is trying to wreck some face around here. More power to you there, Hungary. And Hungary might actually go for the Siege of Holland as well. Interesting indeed. So once we get our transports here, we'll just uh, detach a blockade so we can keep the blockade bonus. So we only need, yeah, two light ships to hold the blockade, it looks like. Let's go on up here with our heavies here and see if we can blockade uh, Holland a bit. Now, it does say there's going to be some combat, but he ducked on off. All right, so now we have 100% blockade of Holland. Does that change his uh, opinion of us a bit? All right, they are negotiating for themselves, and uh, they're almost ready if we were to somehow siege down uh, this holding and lay siege to their capital. I'm sure they will want out. As a matter of fact, can we get to... Okay, so we can get to their capital, Amsterdam, this way. So why not? Let's go ahead and lay siege to uh, Amsterdam. Put some pressure on them to leave. Might get some gold out of this. Now, ideally, we want to take this because this is in the, um, the English Channel node. And there's a lot of trade power right here from Amsterdam. If we look at the county itself, there is a Rhine estuary here in Den Haag, which is a lot of trade power for sure. Oh, we'll just use our boat then. That's fine. Because we have enough transports here, they'll get on the boat and then do a naval invasion of Amsterdam, a landing, as it were. But we can really put some pressure down. These forts are 42% ready to fall. Defenders desert, we rolled a six. And then we rolled a three last time with 12 siege status. Yeah, that, that level 2 fort is uh, giving us a, uh, a bad time here. But we're at 0%. So we should, if we have some good rolls. Oh, an agent from France. So it looks like old France is trying to spy on us here. Maybe to take Co or uh, Amour. 
All right, Siege of Devon is over. Oh, and I moved the whole navy, didn't I? Oops. So that wasn't good. 23 September. That was my mistake. I forgot they were going to pop out. And we are not going to last long enough. No. They captured one of our ships, and now they're going back to, uh, to blockading us, but our navy should be good enough. All right, so there's Holland there. Will Holland get out of the war? They're negotiating for themselves, and they are really close to uh, capitulating this particular war. So we'll stay on it, especially if we can siege down Den, uh, Den Haag from Holland. There's a defender's desert, 21%. No. We don't want to take any land from Holland this war. Um, aggre aggressive expansion and all that. But what we will do is try to get some money from them and uh, skew this in our favor. Once Holland gets out of the war, we'll look for Utrecht. See if we can get him out of the war and really start getting some... Uh, Some good war score from England. 35% defender dessert. Not having ice cream, but the defenders uh, defenders leave. Yeah, Hungary's just sitting there like, I don't know what to do. If you could get on Utrecht, that would be pretty awesome there, guy. Verona, uh, Galilee, Swabia, Luxembourg. Huh. Maybe they are. All right, Siege of Montgomery is done. And now England will agree to our demands, but we could milk this even more if we can get Holland out of the war. It's just a little bit of, you know, manpower loss and attrition. But that should be fine. We can get even more war score. Oh, wow. So Utrecht has sent some boats our way. It's not going to end well for them for sure. They're trying to get our blockade broke, but you know, that's uh, that's all well and good. They threw themselves at it and failed. Let's see. The Renaissance. So this is tech group stuff. Um, now the institution is active. We can invest in new technology, and now would be the time to do it before we start getting an institution tech penalty. So let's go ahead and take that and tech up. We can now build uh, marketplaces and whatnot. But what's going to happen is this institution and Renaissance spawned right here in Tangiers. So it will spread to Iberia, Leon, Aragon you know, all of these holdings first. Now, because we have a good relationship with Aragon, we might get a bump to the Renaissance, but it is going to start spreading slowly. As it takes time to do that, when we go to our technology screen, we will start getting a malice, a penalty, the longer we do not have that institution. So before we get that penalty, we want to try to get military tech four while we are still uh, behind time or because of the neighbor bonus before that penalty kicks off So that is going to be my goal for now Let's see if we can win some of these sieges and get Holland out of the war All right, we should start get to uh, some positive siege status here and I don't want to break off the blockade with those 15 uh, ships right there. Holland has one heavy and nine medium ships. So, you know, it's better that we we try to take them out slowly. But as far as England goes, what's going to happen is the length of the war is going to continue to tick. So right now they really, really want out. And we can actually spend some of our Diplo, diplo points to take some more land that we did not have claims on. Um, each one has its own overextension cost, and we can't take more than 100% overextension, or it would be very bad for us. All right, so Utrecht is out of the war. Siege of Den Tag is over. So now Holland will probably want out, and they do. So what we can do 
is they are negotiating for themselves. Let's try to get some money out of them. We can get 75 gold out of them, which seems good. We'll send that demand. So Holland is now out of the war and our war score skyrockets. So if we wanted to, we could now uh, try to take Galicia, which should be fine. Let's get our troops back on these boats here. Now, what you see here is called a black flag. We negotiated peace with a country that our troops were in, so these troops can no longer fight while they have the black flag. In order to clear the black flag, we board our ships in a sea tile or march through our own territory in order to get back. It's powerful because the black flag allows us to march through anybody's territory, so if we wanted to, we could just march right through France uh, and get back here, but the boats are faster. So we'll go ahead and wait for our troops to uh, board the boats here, smash this uh, British Navy, or English Navy, as it were, and take out Galicia here. And then if we can, oh man, they're getting sieged down. Good job, Brittany. Man, that is rough. Can we get Galicia out of the war now? I believe so. They want out. Outstanding. So let's go ahead and take money from them. 160 ducats. We'll go ahead and send that demand. So there we go. 100% war score. And now nothing really stops us from taking what we want. So yeah, now it's 100 to 0. And they can't tell us no. Because of the 100 war score. So as you can see, it's important to knock out all of the allies that we can and we have England completely sieged down so we can say hey you know what you can transfer trade power to us and because they own some stuff in the English Channel that would be a really good way to make some money or we can take some counties here um, let's see like Chester uh, Leicester Scarborough Cambridge Dorset? Nope. So that's pretty much it, huh? 87, 94. So our demands cannot exceed uh, 100. But right now we have 48 uh, aggressive expansion and we have 58% overextension. Now these uh, counties we will have to core and make them part of Great Britain and not England. But we have taken a substantial chunk out of England in this war and they will be down to four counties uh, which means that they can be annexed in the next war once we go to war with England if they haven't gotten anything else and we take this real quick fast and in a hurry there's really nothing they can do um, what we could do is try to be a little bit cheeky and not take something like um, Montgomery but you know what that's a fort we'll go ahead and take that if we don't take like Dorset and tell them, you know what, you will no longer be friends with Holland. That's one less person that we have to worry about sieging down in the next war. Um, so that will just leave Galicia, Utrecht, and Holland. Galicia was sort of a pain to get a hold of, so annulling treaties with Galicia might not be a bad idea. And then with the remaining war score, we'll take uh, however much gold gets us to 100%. 48 gold. So for 48 gold, we take all of these counties. They will be down to five. And we will get uh, another treaty with Galicia, meaning we won't have to run down here to siege them down. They'll have to try to make another friend in this area. And it will be easy to siege them down. So there we go. Send that demand. And now all of this stuff is in our territory. So now it's just a matter of getting our troops back home. Let's go ahead and land right here with our uh, navy. We'll send our ships to, uh, to head back out to protect trade. So we'll create a new unit, get all the light ships out there, select that unit, protect trade in the North Sea if you please. And then uh, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to keep the damaged ones behind to repair. 
Uh, they have to be in a dock at the monthly tick to repair. But, eh, we'll, uh, we'll worry about that once uh, we cross that bridge. All right, sweet. So now we've won the war. What happens? Well, now we get our troops out of here that are black flag. So we could just move them into friendly territory. Uh, we'll see this uh, indicator here that we have exiled armies. Once they move to Somerset, that will be fine. We can also take an admin tech four, which I believe we should um, before the institution tech penalty kicks in. But what we also have to do is spend admin points on what's called cores. So you can see this overextension here. We're at 52%, which is increasing unrest, um, relations, and all that good stuff. And you can see the cost of uh, admin points that we need to spend to lower that. So I think now it would be a good idea to lower our overextension and make some cores here. 8%. 8%, 7%, 6%, and why not? Let's just finish all of these cores up, and that leaves us with 287 admin power, and over time, these cores will construct, and April, two years from now, these people will consider themselves part of our country, which is really powerful, but until then, we now have um, uprisings, national unrest, so how do we deal with unrest? We can go here and click on the rebel faction and we can see what will happen if they raise an army against us and siege down the holdings. 10 years of separatism. So we go into the uh, county and we can see the autonomy and we can see the unrest. And you can see how much uh, unrest is being brought by the separatism if these separatists were to fire and win, uh, they would return to England if they enforce their demands, and if they if they siege down a county but still lose, they will gain that separatism there and unrest will just be unruly. So because we have troops with full morale, what we can do is station troops here in the areas where there is the most upheaval. And we can see where the revolt is more likely to take place. Uh, so in about three and a half years, Hull, Scarborough, Sussex, uh, Coventry, Chester, Leinster, and Cambridge all might fire. So we have quite a bit of uh, some management to do. Now, luckily, our advisor here lowers national unrest by two, our theologian. He is very, very powerful keeping these rebels at bay. Now, in order for these to fire, the factions will have to go up uh, to 100%, and each month they have a percentage chance of ticking up. So you can see, we have a 23.7% chance of one of, uh, of uh, faction progress. It will go up to 10%. However, in Montgomery, there's only a 3.4% chance each month that they will increase. So we need to focus on these counties here Hull in particular. So let's go ahead and get some troops there on Hull and see if we can lower some of this. You see there? Rebel factions have ticked up by 10%. Now if we go to Hull and we see the unrest, it's at 1.6 and friendly troops lower it by 4. So what we can do is we can load even more friendly troops at, on Hull and try to lower that so it's one less county uh, giving it a chance of firing which is very good for us so now we can see hull drop to 1.1 scarborough is our next location where we really need to focus on and that's up there so we'll go ahead and send some troops over that's an unbalanced unit, so I'll go ahead and merge these guys up and send one infantry up there to join him. So we have a balanced force. And then we'll see where we are after that. So Hull is ticking down. We can see that unrest is now down to 0 0.6. Friendly troops are up to 5. So uh, each, you know, it's sort of uh, divided by 4. So if you have 4,000 troops, 
that's friendly troops and one. Uh, and if you have 20k, friendly troops are five, and, and so on. So this will be 18k. Really, we need two more thousand troops here in order to get a, another tick. So that's what we're going to do. We'll bring those 2,000 up to Scarborough as well and try to deter that. All right. They claim Cornwall as their own. So England is uh, fabricating their own claims with us. However, we have a truce with them till 1465. So unless they want a truce break, they're, they're just, you know, getting their, uh, their sights set. Speaking of which, we have 53 spy network on England. We might as well continue to fabricate more claims. So we know we want all of it eventually, but let's start with the highest development provinces, shall we? So Man is a three, Camarthen is a three, Devon is a six, Dorset is a six, Contini is a 10. That should definitely be our first claim for sure. No, not declare war. No, 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 no. All right, we want to fabricate the claim on Continent. Boom. And we can actually fabricate the next claim. And I think Devon will be a nice target. Boom. So now we have two fresh claims for 25 years against England. And then we will be ready to move. So we have some diplomats not doing anything. And let's look at France. They absolutely hate us. They are our rivals. So making them like us isn't going to help matters much. How about our vassal here? 199? Um, no, we can only improve relations by 6 to get him up to 100. Look at Brittany. Improve relations are at 94. That's fine. Let's take a look at Aragon. Improve relations is 34, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to improve some relations with our buddy down there in Aragon. And we also look at our allies here, Hungary and Leon. So how about Leon? They're at 80. We definitely need to improve some relations there. So now all three of our diplomats are doing something. We're trying to quell some unrest here. And we can see that Hull and Scarborough aren't going to be a problem, but Cambridge might. So let's go ahead and get some troops on Cambridge here. Now this is interesting. We have two forts here. This fort is will protect uh, Gwynedd, Camarthen, and Glamorgan. But the one in Shrewsbury is already doing that. And I think more bang for our buck, Shrewsbury would be the way to go. So we are going to probably uh, destroy this fort. Now, forts improve our military, um, our army tradition due to the number of forts we keep. So if we want that to increase, we could keep it open. We're making two ducats a month, so we're not going in debt trying to keep it open. But I'm just thinking that another fort might be worthwhile, say, in Somerset or something to that effect. You know, uh, destroy a castle and build another one where it makes sense. So I'll go ahead and do that. We will destroy that castle there. And we will build one, a coastal fort, in Somerset for 200 gold. Boom. So that should be nice. Uh, Somerset will protect uh, Gloucester. So that will be a very difficult county to tank with Shrewsbury and Somerset under its sphere of influence. That will also protect Hampshire. And then when we take Dorset and Devon, it will protect that coast. And it is a coastal fort. So they would have to um, position themselves in St. George's Channel to siege that down or to get the, uh, the blockade. All right, so Cambridge. Let's go ahead and get these five troops over to Cambridge. Let's get these three troops over to Cambridge and try to help them out here. So we have our transports and our heavies fully um, maintained. We know there's prov uh, provincial unrest, but we can build province improvements. So in our macro builder, when we click on, say, the marketplace, it will show us where the marketplace will give us the most uh, trade power because we can see local trade power based on the development. So if we want to increase our trade power here in the English Channel, then by all means, London and Mide would be the best place to do it. So why not? 
let's increase our trade power in the English Channel. Now we've taken a lot of counties here in the English Channel as well. All of those counties we've taken, once we get them um, cored and the unrest sort of put down and let the autonomy tick down, those will really um, change the, the look of the English Channel. Now what do I mean by autonomy? So you can see there, autonomy is at 75, and we can't lower it anymore because it was an English core, and we took it in war. What we can do is, as we tech up, we will have the ability, once I find it here, to do states. Where are we at here? Uh, where are the states? I know I've seen it somewhere. Here we go. So we have 12 states active right now. Once we tech up to the point where we can open up more states, we could then make states out of these English holdings, which will allow us to drop that autonomy even more, giving us taxes, production, and all that other good stuff. We can see the devastation from the war is going down because it isn't under siege. And then that will also increase the uh, institution spread, supply limit, uh, the manpower, the taxes, and all the good stuff that comes with it. All right, so looking at Cambridge here, we have some infantry there. Unrest is still at 3.1. Now, if we were to lower autonomy, we could try to milk them for more stuff, but that would drastically increase the unrest. And autonomy is going down by 0.1 each month we're at peace anyway. So let's not push these rebels any farther. Um, they are basically where the rebels are going to fire if they are going to fire. Now it's going to be Sussex, Coventry, Chester, and Leinster, but we are, for the time being, um, working on these cores. Once these cores go away, them being upset about our overextension will go away. So we will lose 2.6 ferocity from this unrest because we will have cores there. The Breton people, during his education as heir, Fenish J, let's take a look at him here, our 242 19 year old, has come to be very close to our royal advisor, forming a special bond book to both her, her, that's the male, oh, I guess uh, the advisor, Sh uh, Saunad, Shaunad? Shaunad, sure. Uh, they demand we chastise the heir and guarantee the rights of the nobility. So, Arthur Cleave, guide our young heir instead. We lose 50 admin points. The Irish Catholic statesman Arthur Cleave joins the court, which he is a level two advisor, but he is half price. And he is a diplomatic reputation advisor. So if we wanted to swap him out, what would that be? Our spy construction network guy could be fired. Um, we are constructing a spy network, but just against uh, England. So the question is, do we want better diplomatic reputation at half price? Now remember, we pay 1.04 monthly for this guy, and if we were to pay for a level two advisor, that is 60 ducats a month, they would drop prob or, uh, four ducats a month, he would probably drop to two, so we would get the bonus, the benefit. A half price advisor is very powerful, so for double the points, or double the ducats, we get double the points, and cost to hire isn't as much, so we could hire him, and we do have the treasury to do that. Or, the claim strength of the air goes down by 25, and Breton culture will go down by three unrest for 10 years. Now, if we look at uh, these uh, counties that are providing unrest, like Sussex, Coventry, Chester, let me move this out of the way here, if we look at Chester, they are English, so that's not going to help us. If we look at Sussex uh, down here, they are English, that's not going to help us. So, you know, I don't want to lower the claim strength of the heir. He is a strong heir, so our um, legitimacy keeps going up. And a high legitimacy um, lowers the unrest, good tolerance, diplomatic reputation, income from vassals, all good things. So I think we can take the admin tech hit, even though that's going to put us a little bit behind on the temples. 
and hire the diplomatic reputation guy? It might not be a bad idea. So let's do that. So now Arthur... Oops, I looked at the wrong one. It said diplomatic reputation. Oh, I see. So our heir was messing with the administrative advisor, but we get a half-priced diplomatic advisor. So we'll go ahead and hire um, Arthur, and then we will put back the stability cost guy, because I don't want to keep going in debt here. So there we go. So now we have a level two advisor in our employ at basically double the price. So this is a good trade-off. Um, plus we're getting more Diplo points, uh, one more Diplo point, which sort of offsets our penalty that we're running with our, um, oh, I thought we were running at a, huh, so we aren't over our diplomatic relation limit. Outstanding. I thought we were. So yeah, just getting that bonus diplomatic points. So sounding pretty good. How is our fleet over here? Nice. So all of our barks are fully, uh, fully charged, which is good. And yeah, we are just uh, sitting at peace, letting these cores uh, go up. 1452 is when the cores will be done. Then our overextension will go away. And this will drop to zero. So that's going to uh, decrease everyone's unrest by 2.6. And then we won't have to worry about these rebel factions firing anymore. We can also see that if the English separatists fire, they're going to be bringing 25,000 troops with them because they are revolting from uh, seven development uh, counties. Now, from the, uh, from the one county, they can only raise eight. So I guess that's a pretty good deal why we're not seeing 80K. I mean, that's pretty, pretty good there. All right, so diplomatic reasons are going. I don't believe we have enough to claim the next... In England, it requires 30. So we make 1.4. So next month, we can get our next claim on England while these cores go down. I think once we top off relations with Aragon and Lyon, we will sw swap to Scotland. Because we don't want them dropping um, into the negative because their liberty desire would go up. And if they get over 50 liberty desire, they may declare independence and we definitely don't want to fight an independence war against Scotland we would win but you know I'm not all about that all right we can make the next claim on England fabricate the claim on Carmarthen Dorset or man and I don't think it really matters uh, Dorset is a six okay so Carmarthen's a three man's a three Dorset's going to be our next claim boom so 25 years, now we have a claim on Dorset. And we only need two more claims until we are done claiming things from England, which is outstanding. I'll keep on going until these cores are done. That way we can see the unrest. Uh, we can reorganize our troops. Let's take a look at tech costs. And we can see that now we are at a 2% malice for the Renaissance. But it is spreading. Let's take a look at the spread now. So these counties are the ones that are getting the Renaissance, and it is a slow go. So from this county, if we were to look at the institutions, it's present there and spreading here at 0.9 per month, spreading here at 0.7, and then so on and so forth, and it'll, uh, it'll snowball after that. Nobles ally with foreign power. The nobility is not fully subjugated during this age, and nobles could and did strike independent alliances with foreign princes. The crowns of Europe might not have liked it, but they normally hard-pressed to prevent these kinds of activities. So we get the diplomatic insult, cast this bell eye on Scotland and lose 33 admin power, or lose 15 prestige? The prestige sucks. But Scotland's opinion would drop on us with the diplomatic insult, cast this belly, and I don't want to lose any more admin power because we, we want to get this admin tech before... The bonus is offset by the institution. And we, we can always butter them up. Uh, I think they like us well enough that the diplomatic insult Cassus Belli won't offset them too bad. 
So they have insulted us. We'll see if that updates next month with the uh, insulted penalty. No. Sweet. So yeah, not worried. We saved our admin points. Cores are about done and we can watch this overextension bleed away once all of these uh, cores finish here. We'll see the percentages tick down as these cores finish. The number will tick down and we're not overextended. So, um, you know, we're not, uh, we're not in a malice. And there we go. Now considered part of our patrimony, we're down to 27% uh, overextension. Now unrest is at 1.3 and the rest of them should tick down fairly soon here. Guess it takes a little bit longer on these, but they're almost done. We'll be down to 0% overextension, and we can see that the Rebel factions are still 5.3 in Sussex, Coventry, Chester, and uh, Leicester. But once this is done, I believe those effects will go away, and they won't be firing so viciously here. Cores will be done at the end of the month, and that'll be a good stopping point for us while we... Um, reorganize herself. Expiring Cassus Belly. There we go. So now we are no longer overextended, and we will let that Cassus Belly expire the diplomatic insult. We don't care. Not a bit. So now taking a look at the Rebel factions, they're down to four, and Hull and Scarborough are actually ticking down. So we can afford to lighten the load a bit on some of these uh, troops. We can take 4,000 troops away from here and put them on uh, Sussex and Coventry. We also have tech costs that we can take and we definitely want to take military tech four. That increases our morale and tactics. No new, no new units yet, but on the next military tech, we will get new infantry, which is awesome. We'll get better shock. We'll get more combat width so we can support more frontline troops and better supply limits so we won't be getting attrition as we walk from place to place. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take four troops from here and I will march them to Sussex and then I will take four troops from Scarborough. Whoops. And I will move them to Coventry. And then we'll see how those, uh, those people respond. See if we can keep this rebel faction from getting to 100%. It'll lower it by one, but it may prolong it. 2.9 years, it says. Let's see, why else are they so upset here? Uh, Non-accepted culture and separatism. Now, the separatism will slowly tick down. As we hold this as a core, um, each year the separatism will go down by 0.5. So we've got 28 years until all the separatism is gone, unfortunately. But what about cultures? If we were to accept that culture, what would that look like? So let's go to our... Let's see. do 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 Where's our culture? Culture, culture, culture. I know it's around here somewhere. Just give me a moment. I know I've seen it. I've seen it this playthrough, actually. It's not diplomacy, government. So as we can see, we have zero of two promoted cultures. So we can promote these cultures and say, you know what? This isn't bad. Now, Anglo-Saxon culture is 47% of our cores. So it wouldn't be bad to promote that culture. It's 100 Diplo points, but we're not going to be spending Diplo points. Um, we're right on time. We probably could. Trade range, trade efficiency, and naval maintenance goes up. But I think in order to curb uh, some of these, we can promote English. That's English. That's English. That's English. That's English. That's English. London is Anglo-Saxon. I bet that's where most of it's coming from. 
I bet, because we, once we're done coring, we can, uh, once it's done separating, we can change the culture or we could just promote it and get rid of some of this unrest. And as we conquer land, you know, it's going to be... Come on now, where were you? Can't believe I just lost this. What tab is it on? The government, yeah. So we could promote English for 100 power. That would lower... Why not? We'll do that. And then we'll promote Anglo-Saxon as well. So we have our two promoted cultures. Uh, Breton is 8% Welsh and Dutch. But now we see no unrest here because English is accepted in Great Britain, and, and why not? So now we have Chester, Leicester, Sussex, and Coventry, and we've pushed back the opportunity for them to fire. So now that we've dealt with them, we might be able to lower some of the troops needed here in Hull. Yeah, definitely. We can pull uh, 8,000 troops. All right, Leon is done. We'll recall that diplomat and have them work on Scotland for improved relations. There we go. Diplomat is back. Improve the relations here in Scotland. And then we'll pull off... Eight troops in Hull. Seems legit. And we can move them to Chester and Leicester. Create new unit. One, two, three, four. Let's move down to Leicester. And then one, two, three, four. And this will be Chester. see Chester 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 boom oh I didn't split them did I oh no I got them so once there are no counties here that will provide unrest uh, this will slowly tick down uh, then once it goes to zero the rebel uprising goes away and everything is good but that is going to do it for me in this episode of Europa Universalis ladies and gentlemen how close are we to annexing Scotland? 1457. So maybe in the next episode, it looks like we can start the integration process of Scotland with 190 opinion. So it's good that we're improving relations here in Scotland. We can raise it up another 12, which would put us at the 190 mark. Might give them some gold in order to keep them high. And then we can get these three counties peacefully. That's going to do it for me. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next Europa Universalis video. Take care.